Hi, thanks for joining us here at Pineapple Racing. We're going to be covering the basic parts for a rebuild, and we're frequently asked about the individual components and what should and should not be replaced, and we're going to go ahead and go through that now. We're not going to be very year-specific, but we're going to cover the general components that you might want to look at. At a later date, we'll be concentrating on individual models. First thing, the rotor is it from your motor any good? This particular rotor here is a Series 4 turbo rotor, 8.4 to 1 compression, brand new rotor. If your rotors do not make specification, the grooves, especially the corner seal grooves, are wallowed out. If the gear has been broken, or if the rotor face has seen heavy damage or been damaged for broken apex seal, then this is a prime candidate for replacing a rotor. If not, just clean them thoroughly, check them, and you're ready to go. The components you need for the rotor. First thing most comes to mind, apex seal. There are several apex seals. We typically prefer the factory seals for almost all the applications. They give you the broadest use and great reliability. Most of the aftermarket seals were designed for a very specific application. And if you don't suit that application, you might not find that they do for you as well as you'd like. Along with the apex seals, you'll want apex seal springs. The later motors, starting in 86, actually used two springs. There's a long outer spring and a shorter inner spring that lined up with the apex seal. These springs are a pretty easy choice. There aren't very many options. Corner seals. And the corner seals, if they're not badly damaged, no cracking, and the corner seal hasn't made a strong mark in the side, you should be able to reuse these. If not, the corner seals are not an extremely expensive component. They can be bought two ways. You can buy a corner seal with or without the end plug. The end plugs were designed by Mazda to make the motor a little more efficient than cranking and idle. You will have several choices in springs. The original motors, made from 85 and earlier, used a flat wire spring. And that's a perfectly good unit, but it was placed starting with the third generation RX-7 with what we would call the flat spring. And this spring has a lot greater tension, lasts a lot longer, will take more abuse, and is directly replaceable of the wire core seal spring in all but early 71 through 3 applications using a 6 millimeter apex seal. The next seal would be the side seal. And the side seals, whether we replace those or not, has to do with two things. One is how much the height is worn. And typically, if you can feel a sharp edge on the side of the side seal, it's probably time to replace it. The other important factor is the length of the seal and how well it fits into the groove. Although these grooves look like they're all perfectly machined and even, in reality they do vary quite a bit. And so if you have a side seal that you feel is tall enough and in good enough condition to reuse, if you can find one that will fit into your groove and give you the correct clearance, it can be reused. There's not a problem. If you're unsure, then you either go in and build the rotors early, find out how many you end up with, that you have no side seal to fit, or the safest bet, and if you're going to build a quality rebuild, is just to buy 12 new side seals. They'll come long. You will have to sand each one individually. Take your time, and you'll be able to do a great job on fitting a really tight motor that will last you a very, very long time. The side seal springs should always be replaced. For those of you building the normally aspirated motors, the third generation RX-7 had a thicker spring, a little more tension, 
a really great choice. They're a little more money, but in my opinion, well worth the money. Now we finished with the apex seals, the corner seals, and the side seals, and their associated springs. Now we should consider the oil control rings, the oil rings and the springs. The oil control rings are reusable. The specification of the book is the wear edge, about 20 thousandths. But really, if you're going to build a motor that lasts as long as the original factory motor did for you, replacing them is really a good idea. And the air control rings come as a pair. So you would have to order four pairs. The O-rings, outers, and inners should always be replaced. There's some aftermarkets available. So far, from all my testing, i found that the only O-ring that works 100% of the time is the factory O-ring. All the other aftermarket O-rings that we've tried over the years, a half percent, one percent, two percent of the time they have a problem. Do you want to be the two percent and have to tear the motor all the way back down because you've got either a consistent or an inconsistent oil consumption problem? To me, for a little extra money, not worth it. The springs, and there are four different types of springs underneath each of the oil control rings, should always be replaced. The springs are divided up into the front and rear, and they'll be what Mazda calls cream color, but most of us that are not colorblind would call it white. And the rear side would be blue. There's also an inner and an outer. And if you look carefully, you will find that the oil control ring springs have a squared off edge and they have a rounded edge. And when you look front to rear, the rounded edge will switch sides. So you've got to be very careful installing these that they go on the correct side rotor. Their job is to get trapped against the rotor so that the spring has to spin with the rotor. And the other end will catch a groove on the back side of the oil control ring so it also spins with the rotor. Because of the amount of drag that the oil control ring has on the side plate, if it did not spin with the rotor, it would rotate in the groove and very quickly wear out the O-rings. These should definitely, again, be replaced every single rebuild. Stationary gears, major hard parts, you'll have to look at those individually to decide if you need to replace them or not. As a matter of course, Mazda suggests reusing a bearing if it still looks good. In my opinion, unless the bearings are exceptionally nice, I would just as soon put a brand new fresh bearing in. If you do it carefully and you break the motor in properly, this should give you the longest possible life. If you put a bearing back into service that's already been through 80 or 100,000 miles of service, how long is that going to last before the oil clearances get very large and you start having some issues with oil pressure? So I would really consider replacing the bearings. Now the main bearings located in the stationary gears are available. They're relatively inexpensive and they're fairly easy to replace. So I'd recommend that you do that. Also, the rotor bearings, which would not be necessary if you buy a brand new rotor because they come installed, also should be replaced. If the bearings get too loose, especially in a very high RPM motor, you can end up with an engine miss or similar problems that you just can't figure out. If everything's too loose, you're also not going to have good oil pressure. Inexpensive insurance. If you're going to do a job, might as well do it right the first time. Also, you're going to want to look at your water seals. We offer two options. We have a factory water, keel, water seal kit that contains all the basic components for the bare block to be assembled just in the way of O-rings. You've got your inner water seals, outer water seals, and some of the other associated O-rings that are necessary. A complete gasket kit would contain this seal kit and the necessary gaskets for installation. 
the exceptionists is those of you building Renesis motors. The O-ring kit is purchased as one part number, and depending on if you're using a high horsepower motor, manual transmission, or the low horsepower, there'll be a separate external kit available. For all those of you using the earlier motors, the gasket kit typically will come as one piece. Contains just about everything you will need. Oddly enough, none of these gasket kits contain a front and rear main seal. So those should be ordered separately. The rear main seal, and this is the front main seal. You should always replace these anytime you have access to them. If you're doing a clutch job and you remove the flywheel, go ahead and replace that rear main seal. Also to consider some of the smaller components, pilot bearing and pilot bearing seal. Now, most places that you'll buy a pilot bearing from that do not know the Mazda product well will only include a pilot bearing, will not include the seal. The dust seal is important to make the pilot bearing last as long as possible. Keep all that abrasive clutch dust out of it. And finally, we sell our own line of heavy duty water seals. We've found over the years in testing the Mazda seals that in certain applications, they're just not up to the task. And so we've come up with our own water seals. We've been using them for about 10 years now with great success. We've had some motors that have been ridiculously hot, hot enough to turn the plates blue, and the water seals have still held pressure. Included with the water seal kit would also be a rear stationary gear O-ring. Very important, so you don't have an oil leak. This is also made out of a better material than the original factory. You'd have your four dowel pin O-rings, which would fit the seal around each of the dowel pins. For those of you with older motors that have possibly been overheated and have an odd oil leak coming out of the block in between the plates, this O-ring has gotten too soft and it's collapsed. The material that we're using will take a lot more temperature and live a lot longer than the original factory O-ring. Also some other items that come into play, the front O-ring and for those with 89 and later motors, the backup ring that helps prevent this from blowing out. We've got the cutters and on molier motors we can machine the front plate to accept this backup ring and it pretty much eliminates the uh, previous problems of the O-ring blowing out and having a problem with very low oil pressure. Really at the heart of a good rebuild is a rotor housing replacement. This is, for all intents and purposes, your cylinder wall. And if you are expecting to get the same life as the original factory motor, a used part will not do it. If you're going to use a part with 50 or 80,000 miles on it, you're getting the worst half of the use. And spending money on brand new Apex seals would be a waste. You're going to take that brand new fresh Apex seal and run it on a used, worn out surface. The other issue is starting compression when the motor is brand new. If you put too many used surfaces together, it might be a while before that motor comes up in compression. They're not cheap, but if you're going to build a motor that's going to last, a new rotor housing is the way to go. For the third generation guys, definitely spend the money, buy a real third generation rotor housing. We've had the best success with these. They're a little thicker material and will take the high stresses that most of the third generation motors are making for big horsepower. Also, if you go through and you're checking your plates and you're finding that the plates aren't up to task, we can get brand new plates, and it is possible to resurface the plates. Or in the case of motors where you've done an extensive amount of port work, we can re-nitrate the plate. And this would be necessary if you had a plate with a tremendous amount of wear, and it was going to take more surface removal than the nitriding is permeated, and we need to re-harden the surface. So very important. On the motors that have been overheated, take a very good look. The water seal area, the jacket can break, and at this point you want to replace the plate. 
So that covers all of the basic major components. Just make sure that you take a good look. If you're going to build a high horsepower motor, don't attempt to do it on a bunch of used parts. You're not going to be happy.